What is good, everybody? Today, we are getting into a particular topic, man. We're getting into a specific topic that I want to talk about with collectors in general. This could be any really collector, but I'm going to be diving necessarily into the wrestling action figure space today. But this could touch on really any collecting or action figure collecting source, I believe. You know, I think this does dip into some other areas outside of wrestling, but I wanted to talk about this. I put it up on my Instagram story. I polled everyone, or I put up a question there, and I said, what is the biggest issue facing collectors in 2024? What are some of the big things that collectors have to deal with in 2024? What is the issues that we face in this modern time? You know, you know, action figures have come so far, especially in the wrestling action figure line, especially from Mattel. We talked about the improvements all the time. We talk about how much the line has improved and all these different things. But today, we're going to be talking about the problems, the things that still exist. And a lot of it really doesn't have to do with the figures themselves. Now, some of them do, which we'll get into in this video. But I think a lot of it has to do with the processes and the logistics and the different things that are kind of, uh, they're a part of the action figure community that are a part of the game but at the same time they are kind of they're they're not you know they're kind of indirectly involved or whatever but let's get into it man one of the top things that I got commented or I got replied to the video or to the question was distribution and distribution is something that I think everybody has an issue with distribution if you guys don't know what distribution is it is pretty much Mattel makes the figures and then getting the figures from them from their factories to the stores or to the warehouses whatever so that the public Public so that their customers, their fans, can actually obtain the figures. So I think everybody can kind of speak for themselves, their own experience, but I think everybody's really talking about the Walmarts of the world. They're talking about the Targets of the world. They're talking about, you know, trying to obtain these exclusives that becomes tough. And I can certainly say without a doubt, if you watch my toy hunt from the other day, Walmart is probably worse than Target in my experience, but Target, I don't struggle with exclusives. I feel like Target is really good about getting their exclusives on shelves. I think Target, Target for me, struggles to get the mainline stuff. Anything Legends, anything with the four packs, anything with the vehicles, anything limited edition in terms of that with AEW, all of that stuff hits Target pretty regularly in my opinion. I think Target struggles when it comes to just mainline. I can't tell you the last time I saw a mainline Elite on Target shelves. I don't know if it's that they stock less of it or what, but Target is terrible at that. And then Walmart, they're terrible with everything. I'm just kidding. But seriously, they're, the Walmart distribution, for the most part, is pretty trash. And I, what I fear the problem is with Walmart, I think they just have too many stores. I think that's probably their biggest issue. There's so many stores. It's such a saturated thing that it's very hard to get, you know, these figures in every single store. Now, I don't know the exact quantities of these figures, right? I don't know how many figures are being made of these elites and these mainline figures and all those different things but I feel like Walmart for the most part they're pretty terrible at certain things when it comes to distribution and not to mention the online pre-ordering system with Target and Walmart they have improved slightly I will say they've definitely improved but my god man I know that everybody can relate to that in the fact that they they struggle to find these things at stores man you'll either pre-order something and find it on the shelf first before you get your actual pre-order or you'll never see it they'll cancel your order and you won't find it in store and I think that's kind of something that happens too but distribution is certainly a problem and I really don't know what the fix is I know that they've made steps towards improving it, but I haven't really seen the biggest improvements yet, at least. But I know that some people have experienced some improvement, but Walmart distribution is worse than Target in my experience. I can, you know, you can let me know what you think down below, but that's just what I feel there. The next problem that people had was repeat characters. Too many of the same characters over and over. Now, I think this is kind of a WWE issue. This is them either not being willing to put, you know, let bygones be bygones. They can't sign new talent or maybe the talent themselves don't want action figures made or they don't have you know they don't want anything to do with it so that that's kind of a double edged sword there where you got to figure out which is which but i think that repeat characters i'm one if you see my collection you know that i don't really have the biggest issue with the repeat collectors but obviously it would be nice to see more first time in the line guys people want to see characters that have not been made yet that's what makes the line so fun and fresh i know that mine's kind of a unique situation where i collect a lot of the same characters over and over different looks different attires different moments but i know that a majority of people, I'm not oblivious that, you know, people want these different characters. They want these one-offs. They want the unique looks. And I think that's, again, what makes the line fresh. You get these unique sculpts. You get these, you know, you don't want just repaints over and over again. You do want the new characters in there. And I think that's probably only gotten worse because we have so many damn greatest hits lines, which I think is going to go, it kind of ties into this at the exact same time, is repeat characters kind of ties into re-release lines. There's so many re-release lines. If you get into it, man, there's Greatest Hits, there's Legends Greatest Hits, there's Best of Monday Night Wars, there's Greatest Hits Ultimate Editions, there's From the Vault, 
There's top talents. I mean, I have named so many re-release -re lines just now. I mean, it's like four or five lines now that are giving us re-releases, and they are coming at a clip. I know that, you know, and I get it. They're popular. People like them because you get these things like SES Punk, and you get these rare figures that you may not have had a chance to obtain on the secondary market, or they're marked way up, or they're insanely rare, whatever the case is, which obviously makes sense. It's just that I think repeat characters and the greatest hits and those kinds of lines definitely create create a sort of a, a double whammy situation where not only are we getting repeat characters in the main line, now you're doubling down and getting repeat characters in the greatest hits line. So it's not only a re-release of another of the same character, you're getting a re-release of a re-release, you know? So I think that's kind of what, it's kind of a hand-in-hand -hand issue that goes right there. The next thing that people wanted to talk about was prices. Now, I will have to defend Mattel a little bit here in that I feel like retail prices are are pretty good when you compare them to other characters. I mean, you look at an Ultimate Edition at, you know, Walmart or Target or whatever, and Target, they've been messing up their Ultimate Editions. They've been putting them out for $22 or whatever. So, you know, I think that's an absolute steal. When you think about the quality that you're getting in an Ultimate Edition and all the accessories and all the different stuff you're getting in an Ultimate, I think $32.99 at that price point with that action figure is pretty good, all things considered, all the accessories and cloth goods that you mainly get with Ultimates and stuff. When you compare them to, you know, a Marvel Legend figure that only comes with interchangeable hands that's up there at $25.99 or $24.99 and it's in a smaller scale so I think that prices aren't the biggest deal but what goes into prices is you know when you order from ringside collectibles you're kind of paying that premium price unless you get it later later after the fact but if you're wanting the things first and everything like that you know ringside collectibles is getting these action figures first so that's what you're kind of paying for when you pay or pre-order from ringside collectibles you're paying a premium price because you're going to get it first before the stores and everything like that and sometimes you know there may be a one-off chance that you know a walmart will get something pretty you know maybe a, a couple of weeks later or whatever but in some cases sometimes ringside collectibles will get something a month or two months in advance and that's kind of what you're paying for you're paying for the convenience of locking it down and getting your order in early and that's kind of what that that whole business model is right there so that is kind of what goes into that next up is going to be quality control and i can definitely speak to this i feel like the biggest thing with quality control is some of the heads have been misprinted the heads have been a bit oversized at times pinless joints also ties into this i think that pinless joints you know we talked about that mattel said they were improving it i have seen a little bit of improvement with some recent elites that we've gotten even though you know i think they're kind of it's something that they're kind of playing with as they go you know they're trying to find that happy medium trying to find that perfect formula for the pinless joints you guys already know that i don't like them personally Personally, if I if I could choose whether to have pinless how they are right now versus how they used to be, I would take how they used to be. First of all, you can do leg swaps and do customs and different fix-ups. It makes customizing a hell of a lot easier. But then when you get into the pinless joints, aesthetically, yeah, they probably do look better. But I think they're too tight. I think that they lead to different issues when you compare them. And if you mix pinless joints with certain parts and formulas that Mattel uses, it can run into a lot of different issues, which I've touched on. Elite 106 Usos is a good one there. You have the pinless legs, then you compare them with the Ultimate Edition John Cena shoes. Makes for a very weird thing there. And then you have the really tight ball joints and the weirdness there, and they're very tight in the hips. It's just not a fun figure to pose around, and it can lead to, you know, the Rey Mysterio syndrome where you push the leg forward and it goes back down. That right there is just something that can't exist in 2024. We got to get a smooth ball joint. You don't want, like, I know... It, in the ratchet ball or the ratchet joint era, that is something you had to deal with. That is not something we need to deal with, especially when we have ball joints. That is something that cannot happen. I know there's ways around it. You can heat it up and remove it and kind of sand it down or put a figure back up. There's ways around it. There's definitely ways that you can fix it and make it better. But again, you don't want to pull a figure out of the packaging go to pose it, and then you have to do this crazy action figure surgery on just a, a you know what I'm saying? The casual person is not going to take it out, realize that issue, and then, you know, uh, try to fix it or something like that. They're probably going to take it out and be like, oh, I can't even move his leg or whatever. So there's just different things like that that I think face the, face the quality control. I also think that, you know, I've had, I think my recent JD McCrispy figure right there, it had some issues right right out of the packaging. It was all beat to hell. It had paint chipping. It had like a stab in the torso. But I'll say probably next to some other lines, I think that Mattel's pretty consistent on quality control. But I think that loose shoulders on Ultimates is something that happens quite a bit as well. And then we've talked about the pinless legs and, you know, loose joints that happen is very, very unfortunate and something that, you know, I think you definitely got to hunker down on because it makes everything very frustrating as a collector, especially if you are paying that premium price. If you're doing all these things and then your figure comes out like trash, 
it's like, my God, why the hell am I even doing this if my money's not worth it? So that is a whole different deal right there. But another thing that people talked about in the replies was scalpers. Now, scalpers are a different thing, and I think that scalpers, it's kind of a double-edged double sword as well because I think that, you know, we are all wrestling action figure fans. Any action figure fan is probably not, it doesn't have the best patience, you know, and that kind of explains the model too when it comes into, you know, pre-orders and everything like that. You want your action figures. You want to have these things. Um, it's kind of just the way society's kind of built up now. You know, you want, 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 you want these things the fastest as humanly possible. So people are willing to pay the crazy prices. And I know that it's frustrating for somebody that doesn't want to wait necessarily, but it is very annoying when you get on there. You got Jimmy down the street and he found all of Elite 114 or whatever first. And then now he's charging two, three times the price. Or maybe he found the exclusives and nobody else has found the exclusives. But it is, you know, it's economics 101. You have your, your basic supply and demand. Demand's really high. Supply is not that high. You're, you're going to end up paying more than you really want to. Or maybe even more than what it's worth. But the, the market usually sets itself, right? I mean, if people are out there paying that ridiculous price, people are going to charge that ridiculous price to try and make the most buck as possible. But there are a ton of communities out there that really help each other. I know that there's there's groups online and stuff like that that will post to Facebook and really help people out. There's a lot of really cool people in the community that will help people out in that way. And that's really the importance of the community is to help each other out. Now, obviously, some people are just out to make a buck, obviously, which, which is what the scalpers comment is talking about. But there are people that help each other out and they'll find exclusives for just their friend group and they'll help each other and they'll find it and they'll sell it to them for, you know, retail price plus shipping or whatever the case is. So there is that as well. So I think scalpers are definitely something that I see, but I think, I don't know, this may be a hot take, but I think that the scalpers thing may be overblown. And then I, I did get a lot of international collectors talking about distribution and stuff like that. And I know for an international collector, I am not an international collector, so I can't speak to my experience. You know, there's no... I don't think, besides like maybe a handful of different things, there's no, you know, really big exclusive that I will never be able to obtain that is only available overseas. But I know that a Target exclusive or a Walmart exclusive would probably be pretty pretty difficult to obtain from somebody that lives overseas, which I can't even imagine. And I know you have to pay crazy shipping prices and all those things. So really international collectors, man, you guys are absolutely goaded for having to put up with different stuff like that on a, on a constant basis. And you're able to just take that on the chin and keep moving. I think that's very, I don't know, just international collectors are built different, man. They're just, that's just the way they are. But that's kind of the video that I wanted to get on here and talk about today. Just some of the issues that WWE action figure collectors face. And maybe I missed one. You know, I'm sure there were so many replies, which was awesome. I appreciate everybody that replied to that poll or that sort of question on on my Instagram page because I wanted to just kind of get on here and talk about the different things that collectors face in the modern day. And again, I feel like we're living in the golden era of action figure collecting, especially wrestling action figures. So, you know, we talk about all of these issues, but at the same time, we have a lot of things to be thankful for in this space because the figures have improved so drastically and there's so many great things and details that we're getting nowadays compared to the days of old. But I would like to know what you guys think of all these things and also leave me your thoughts down below on if I missed anything, what I missed, all those different things, man, I'd greatly appreciate it. But before we get out of here. I want to give a huge shout out to our Patreon members. We had a new sign up just the other day. My man James underscore C underscore 115. Shout out to my brother right there, man. Thank you so much for your patronage and your support here on the channel, man. You guys are absolutely goaded. Thank you guys so very much for your continued support as always. But I think that is pretty much going to wrap the video. I wanted to get on here again and just kind of touch on these things. And again, if I miss something, please let me know. But I feel like these are kind of the kind of the broad points, you know, the broad, you know, the broad strokes right there. And you guys can let me know what you think, what your biggest issue is. But I don't know. If I had to rank these things, I'm sitting here trying to rank them. I think that distribution is probably the highest for me. I think that repeat characters doesn't bother me as much. I know that other people find that annoying. Prices, I think for the most part, of course, I, I feel like everything is overpriced nowadays. So that's kind of where that is. You know, I think for the bang for your buck that you're getting, as long as your figure is not messed up in some sort of quality control way or, you know, your figure comes out all right, I feel like we're getting the most out of out of the money we spend. But that's just my opinion. I could be I could be mistaken there. You can let me know what you think there. And then scalpers, I don't see it as much just because I will not pay ridiculous prices aftermarket. I will I will rot there, man. I, I rely heavily on, you know, communities and scalpers are very annoying, but I try my best to I feel like I've done pretty decent over the years at remaining patient and trying to get things, obviously outside of ringside collectibles. You guys know that I don't really pre order from Target or Walmart. I will either I have a couple buddies that will help me out from time to time and then 
then I have, I'll just wait to find it at retail, usually is what I end up doing. But quality control can certainly be something that annoys me. I think out of all of these, distribution and quality control annoys me the most out of things I care most about. But that's just me, man. But anyways, man, I'm getting the hell out. I'll see you guys next time. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later.